here today with Charlie Morrison. He's a 1990 graduate of the College of Business and serves as the president and chief executive officer of the restaurant chain Wingstop uh, for the past nine years. And he also is on our uh, College Business Advisory Council. So thanks for joining me today, Charlie. Thank you for having me, Kevin. Appreciate it. Well, we, we have a, a few questions that we're asking some executives and interested in getting your take on things. My, my first one has to do with the COVID pandemic. So can you talk about your food service business and the impact the COVID virus has had on its operations? Sure, um, and I'll speak broadly about the industry in total, the restaurant industry, uh, as we, I think, have learned through the COVID experience is probably the second largest employer in the country uh, of people. And uh, it's been uh, very difficult for restaurant brands to, uh, uh, you know, deal with the changes that have happened, especially if you run a business that has a dine-in orientation to it. Um, for Wingstop, we've been uh, actually well insulated from it. In fact, our business has been able to grow. Uh, in the month of April alone, our same store sales, which is a measure of existing restaurants and how they're performing, were up 33%. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that people have changed their dining habits. And they are now dining out or in, if you will, at home uh, instead of in the restaurants. Um, and brands that were prepared for this uh, did a lot of work on establishing a digital platform where guests could easily order their food, either have it delivered or pick it up very efficiently. But industry-wide, it's been very difficult. Um, it's created a substantial amount of job loss. A lot of restaurant brands are really hurting right now and having to adapt uh, in a meaningful way uh, their businesses to the new world. Uh, that's that's great to hear that uh, Wingstop's actually had some some positive growth in all this. How how do you think uh, looking forward things will look different in this environment in the future? Well, I, you know, uh, maybe a month ago or so, we thought maybe we were on the way back out of this. And as you know, uh, we reopened some markets. Uh, restaurants started to allow uh, various different levels of occupancy uh, in in terms of dining in, and that has helped. Uh, those businesses quite a bit. Uh, but at the same time, um, the more we're out, the more the risk of spread is. And so uh, I think we're still trying to really figure out what the new normal looks like. Um, I think you're going to see certainly, uh, and you already are seeing this happen across the country, mandates on masks and the use of those in public environments, or in this case, restaurants. Uh, we encourage that with all of our franchisees to wear masks and their team members to wear masks. But I think it's important for guests to recognize that it's important for them too, so that the spread is minimized so that these businesses can get back to work uh, and do what they do best. But as I mentioned before, uh, I think the new normal is going to be this adaptation to uh, a digital transaction that uh, allows guests to safely uh, order uh, their favorite foods and have them uh, either delivered or, or ready for a almost a contactless pickup if possible uh, at the restaurants that will help uh, you know eliminate some of the increased risk of uh, of a higher spread of the virus right right well when you think about the the u s economy over the next year what are what are the things that you're most uh, concerned about and what are you most optimistic about well I'm certainly concerned about the unemployment levels um, that we continue to see that in and of itself uh, is is a big risk because that just means we're continuing to fund uh, that uh, as as uh, as taxpayers and so um, that's going to result in um, some real challenges downstream that we don't see today but I think uh, can be meaningful uh, for us uh, as we go so reopening the economy is important but doing it responsibly is also important as well. And so as we do that, I think you're gonna see um, people start to reemerge, but that, that on, on one side, you're gonna see uh, some businesses that uh, just, just don't adapt well to this new world uh, struggle. Uh, and you're gonna see others that are going to flourish. And so um, I don't know if there's a good side, bad side to that. I know we've, we've experienced great growth. Um, that creates an opportunity for us and for our franchisees who primarily run our restaurants. But uh, at the same time, others are going to suffer. So um, the risks of inflation, the risks of continued unemployment uh, are weighing on everybody's minds right now. And uh, I think the key to eliminating and avoiding a lot of that is to uh, make sure that we're doing everything we can to mitigate the spread of the virus.
Right, right. Well, many of us have been working from home for the, the past few months and uh, mm -hmm. curious to know what that experience has been like for you, if there's been any surprises and, uh, and if you see anything changing in our work environment going forward with respect to uh, place. Yeah, it, it's interesting. We've, for our company, we've had a, a lot of changes and adaptations uh, that we had to do immediately. Um, just like you and I are talking on Zoom right now, uh, that's been the norm for us. And everything has become this uh, new virtual world of Zoom meetings and engagement and a lot of phone conversation. What I, what I see, however, is that in some respects, it's highly productive. Uh, we, we don't have any, uh, if you will, wasted time, um, but we also are much more focused as a company. We've seen that definitely. That we're focused on a few things. You know, the, the addressing of the issue of the pandemic right off the bat gave us a laser focus on what we needed to do to make sure we were uh, able to uh, sustain our business and support our franchisees. Now, as we look forward, um, Wingstop specifically has adopted uh, a plan that we call Philo. And it sounds like some sort of unique accounting term. It's non-GAAP, I promise you. But what it means is first first in, in terms of shutting uh, our restaurants down in the dining rooms and last out uh, as it relates to, uh, we'll be one of the last players who will ever reopen our dining rooms. And so it's changed our world that way. But from an office perspective, it also means that we're gonna be very uh, careful uh, about going back to work. Uh, about a year ago, we bought a brand new building for our company that we're going to remodel and re-image in this new you know, workspace style that everybody loves, which is open and airy. And uh, we realized that that's not going to work either uh, in, mm -hmm. in this world. And so we're making adjustments to that as well. Uh, so right now, it's working for us uh, to be in this virtual space. But I can tell you, that everybody knows this, right? You, that, that interaction with people, the direct interaction is something we miss a lot. Um, don't miss the travel, although we run a restaurant chain, so we have to be out visiting uh, with our, with our uh, brand partners, our franchisees. But it's, uh, it, it, I think we're gonna adapt well, but I think the whole world's gonna head this way. And uh, again, it's all about, were you ready for it? Uh, did you have any of the building blocks in place? And if you did, um, you're gonna be much better presented uh, in the future. Right, right. Yes, it seems like adaptability and flexibility is kind of the, the name of the game. Uh, that right is now. the norm. Yeah, it is sure. the norm of, the, of our world right now, no doubt. Well, one final question for you. There's uh, obviously been a lot in the news lately regarding social justice and renewed calls to combat racism. We're having many of yeah. those conversations on our campus uh, this summer. What are your thoughts regarding racial injustice and how companies might be able to respond? Sure. Well, um, you know, obviously, uh, it's, it goes without saying that uh, uh, the reality of racism uh, is, is existent in our country uh, and that we need to start to really recognize the, what, what that means and how that impacts uh, the lives of so many in our country. Uh, at Wingstop, we have a, a very diverse and unique culture uh, in our organization. And... When, the, uh, when George Floyd was killed, um, we, we have these Zoom calls, like I referenced before, where the team all gets together and we do a weekly vlog. We call it the V-log, but a virtual vlog, blog, right? And everybody, we have 250 plus people on this uh, Zoom call. And uh, shortly after uh, George Floyd was killed, um, I expressed some of my sentiments about it and certainly discussed uh, you're just just angry uh, about what's happening and the fact that it continues and and that things aren't being done enough to uh, combat this and so I expressed this on on our on our team call with 250 people and usually when you have uh, everybody together you ask everybody to push the mute button right so that you don't hear all the background noise and that day I just was inspired and I said unmute I want to hear what you have to say uh, as a team and that kind of became a rallying cry for the company. Now, what, 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 what happened after I uh, opened up the line, if you will, was so many people stepped in and so many people shared real stories. And there was a lot of raw emotion on the call. And uh, for good reason, right? There's so much pain that exists in the hearts of so many um, and so many you know, situations that were discussed about how people have to talk to their children um, you know, especially if you're uh, a black American 
and you have to educate your children on what to be careful about. That's just, it's, un, it's unreasonable uh, to even think that, but it happens. And so that came out and it was, it was very, very constructive for our organization. And it started to champion within the idea that we need to do something more than just talk about it. And certainly you have to listen as leaders. Um, you have to learn a lot about what this means. And then lastly, you got to take action. And so that has been our cry. We've, we've established a task force within the organization. Um, it is uh, a very diverse group of people, uh, 16 strong in our company, that are working on strategies and actions that we can take as an organization to continue to educate and combat and, and, and eliminate ultimately uh, racism in our country. As leaders, um, what I recognized in the, in the killing of George Floyd was that someone who had authority and had autonomy to make a decision misused that authority in a big way. And that was obviously the officers that killed him. And as leaders, we are given a lot of responsibility and authority and using it responsibly uh, is important. And so my call to action, uh, if, if anyone will listen, and I appreciate you asking the question, is for leaders to listen to their teams, to engage the conversation and to take action and learn more about it. And the more we do that, we don't have to wait on uh, you know, the politicians to do this for us. Uh, and wait on the government to say, here's what your new policy needs to be. What we need to do is take action within our organizations. And then through that, we can make a big impact. At Wingstop, we have 20, 25,000 people that we can influence overnight. Uh, that's all the team members within our company. If, if leaders can take that challenge and get out and be more impactful with their organizations and open up the conversation, I think what will come from that will be extraordinary. Right, right. Well, well said. Thank you for, for sharing. Uh, that's uh, you know it's, it's an it's an interesting time in our in our country, but but I think a time of opportunity and and a chance to really make some progress on these difficult issues that have been persistent for so long. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm here to help, uh, and I know uh, the challenges we deal with at Kansas State, and so uh, uh, you know uh, we as leaders are here to uh, help and support and do everything we can to uh, eliminate racism everywhere where it exists. Well, Charlie, I appreciate your time today, and I want to thank you for being part of our uh, e-newsletter uh, uh, video series this year. Thank you, Kevin. I